So you want to move to the Big Island of Hawaii. Well, the Big Island of Hawaii is a very beautiful place with its diverse climate and landscapes. It is also very famous for its active volcanoes, Mount Aloha and Kilauea, and to a lesser extent, Hualalai. Due to the constant threat of volcanic activity from its active volcanoes, you may want to ask yourself, where is the safest place to live on the Big Island? Now, bear in mind, the two active volcanoes, Kilauea and Mount Aloha, make up two thirds of the Big Island. Villages and towns within the last 200 years have been destroyed by lava. So this video is about the Big Island of Hawaii's lava zones and what they mean. So what are the lava zones? Lava zones are areas on the Big Island of Hawaii designated by the U.S. Geological Survey to indicate hazards posed by lava flows based on past history of each volcano. A number scale from 1 to 9 is used, whereas 1 is considered the highest threat of lava flows and number 9 is in the area with the least threat of lava flows. The first one is Lava Zone 1. Lava Zone 1 is basically the highest risk of lava flows, and it consists of the summit and the rift zones of both Mauna Loa and Kilauea, in which repeated eruptions happen numerous times within a human lifetime. On this map, you can see that Lava Zone 1 is a narrow band about 2 to 4 miles, or about 3 to 6 kilometers wide, on both Mauna Loa and Kilauea Volcano. This is considered the most active lava zone. Now there are some residential areas that lie in Lava Zone 1. In fact, Leilani Estates, pictured here, lies right on top of the East Rift Zone. In fact, eruptions took place here in the subdivision in 1955 and in 2018. Here is Kilauea's Lower East Rift Zone eruption map of 1955 and you can see where Leilani Estates got hit the first time. If you live on Lava Zone 1, either on or next to Kilauea's East Rift Zone, prepare for the possibility of a volcanic vent opening up in your backyard. This footage from 1955 shows just that. Okay, this video is from May of 2018 is another example of living in Lava Zone 1. Expect lava to erupt on the streets. Also, good luck in trying to find homeowner's insurance while living in Lava Zone 1. Lava Zone 2. Basically, Lava Zone 2 is next to Lava Zone 1, obviously. About 15 to 25% of the area has been covered by lava since 1800, and about 26 to 75% has been covered by lava within the last 750 years. Lava Zone 2 is mainly adjacent or downslope of Lava Zone 1. Lava Zone 2 consists of the northeast and the southwest part of Mauna Loa as well as the southeast flank of Kilauea. One thing I do want to point out is 75% of Kilauea's southeast flank has been covered by lava in the last 70 years. Keep that in mind if you want to buy cheap real estate in Kalapana. One of the interesting things about Lava Zone 2 is that lava will flow long distances from the vent and some of these flows will be as much as 8 miles or about 14 kilometers long and will destroy any structure on its way to the ocean. If you live in Lava Zone 2, you will need to be aware of the fact that if an eruption takes place upslope from you, a lava flow coming your way is inevitable. There is, however, a limited amount of insurance companies who will insure your residence in Lava Zone 2. Expect to pay anywhere from 5 to 8 times of the average homeowner's insurance, and this can amount to thousands of dollars a year. The next Lava Zone is Lava Zone 3, and Lava Zone 3 is less hazardous than Lava Zone 2. This is due to the greater distance from the vent as well as the topography. A small percentage, or around 1-5%, to has been covered by lava since 1800, and about 15-75% to of the area has been covered by lava within the last 750 years. Lava Zone 3 consists of parts of the northwest flank of Mauna Loa, north and south of Hualalai, and along Highway 11 from Hilo to Na'alehu, as this is where Kilauea abuts Mauna Loa. When comparing to your normal human lifetime, Lava Zone 3 can be considered a relatively safe place to have a residence. The likelihood of a lava flow destroying any communities located in Lava Zone 3 is very small. The next Lava Zone is Lava Zone 4. And lava Zone 4 consists of on or around Hualalai Volcano on the west part of the Big Island. Hualalai Volcano erupts about two to three times every thousand years, so it erupts less frequently than Mauna Loa and Kilauea. The last eruption took place in 1801, and it erupts every two to three hundred years. Less than 5% of the land has been covered by lava since 1800, and less than 15% of the land 
around the volcano has been covered within the last 750 years. However, if an eruption were to happen on Hualalai at any moment, lava flows can reach the sea within hours. And this is due to its relatively steep slopes, as you can see here in the inset. The next two lava zones I want to talk about go hand in hand. They are five and six. And the reason why I would put these two together is because of the fact they have two things in common. The areas in question are protected by topography. Lava Zone 5 is a small area halfway between the summit of Kilauea and the ocean. Lava Zone 5 is south of the summit caldera. It is a zone about 5 miles long or about 8 kilometers and about 3 miles or about 5 kilometers wide. On the north part, it starts just south of Helena Pali Road and ends at the ocean. If you look closely at this map, you will see a small elevation gain or cliff just south of Helena Pali Road. The cliff is anywhere from 50 to 60 feet or about 15 to 17 meters higher than the road. This alone blocks any lava flows from going farther south of here. Lava has a long ways to go to fill up the area north of the cliff. Probably not going to happen anytime soon. The Lava Zone 5 is completely in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. There are two areas on Mauna Loa that have Lava Zone 6. One area is located on the southeast flank of Mauna Loa and the other one is located near South Point of the Big Island. Just like Lava Zone 5, both are protected by Mauna Loa's topography. Here in Lava Zone 6, this part of Mauna Loa is protected from lava flows due to topography. And this is for two reasons. Uh, number one, because there is a lack of a rift zone and also lack of weakness on the southeast part of Mauna Loa just southeast of Makua Veo Veo Caldera. Basically, this is a strong and stable area of the volcano, so don't expect any eruptions anytime soon. And number two, which is the most important factor, is that Makua Veo Veo's caldera floor is around 500 feet or about 100 meters below its southeast rim. Therefore, keeping any lava that erupts confined either to the caldera floor or it will flow away from the summit towards the northeast or southwest via its rift zones. The summit caldera would need to completely fill up with lava in order to reach the rim for lava to be a threat to this area. With these combined circumstances, any communities in this lava zone as of this moment will be safe from lava flows for centuries to come. This is the other Lava Zone 6, which is also part of Mauna Loa and is also protected by topography. It is a narrow stretch of land from Na'alehu to South Point, about 12 miles long by five miles wide or about, or about 19 kilometers long by eight kilometers wide. If you look to the west, you will see a cliff where it drops off around 400 feet or about 120 meters. Now since this area towards the west is a lower lying area, lava flows will be more frequent. Here's what the South Point Lava Zone 6 looks like. You can see there's plenty of grass and no recent lava flows. Also other factors keep this area lava free, such as previous lava flows and eruptive events higher up would divert lava elsewhere. These next two lava zones, Lava Zone 7 and 8, are confined to Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea last erupted 4,500 years ago. It is considered dormant and not extinct. It erupts about once or twice every 10,000 years. So an eruption in the future is inevitable. However, since we're dealing with millennia between eruptions, it's safe here. So Lava Zone 7 is the youngest part of Mauna Kea. 20% of this area has been covered by lava within the last 10,000 years. Lava Zone 8 is the older part of Mauna Kea, and only a small part has been covered by lava within the last 10,000 years. Now the last Lava Zone, which is Lava Zone 9, which is the least hazardous area where there be any lava flows. This area is in the north part of the Big Island called Kohala, and Kohala last erupted 60,000 years ago. It is the safest part of the Big Island from any volcanic activity. Kohala is the only volcano on the Big Island that is considered extinct, so the likelihood of an eruption happening in this area is pretty much zero. 